Okay. We're on? Good. Okay, good evening, everyone. We have a series of three public meetings tonight. So the purpose of this first public meeting is a meeting to consider a zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by Lewis and Gwen Zeldenroost. The Planning Act requires in Section 34, Subsection 12, that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public in respect of the amendment. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive comments and answer questions from the public regarding the amendment to the Township of West Lincoln Zoning Bylaw. We stress that at this point, no decision has been made on the proposed amendment, and any comments received will be taken into account by Council in their consideration. The Planning Act requires through Section 34, subsection 13, that Council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of West Lincoln before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal that decision of Council for the Township of West Lincoln to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal or LPAT. Would the Clerk please advise of the method and dates by which the notice of the public meeting was given? But <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, excuse. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, proper notice was given by way of individual notice mailed on July 5th, 2019. Additionally, a yellow sign was posted on the subject property, and the notice was posted on the township's website as well as in the lobby of the township administration building. Okay, thank you. Will the planner one, Ms. Alexa Cooper, please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? Alexa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Joanne, if you wouldn't mind just putting the sketch up. Thanks. <clears throat> so an application for rezoning was made by Jeffrey and Annette Tenage on behalf of Louis and Gwen Zeldin Roost for 2394 Short Road in the surrounding agricultural property. This rezoning application is required as a condition of consent for minor boundary adjustment application B06 2019 WL that was conditionally approved on May 29, 2019 by the Township's Committee of Adjustment. The minor boundary adjustment proposes to sever parcel 2 from parcel 1, which is the agricultural property, and merge parcel 2 on title with parcel 3, which is 2394 Short Road. Parcel 2 and parcel 3 through this rezoning application are proposed to be rezoned to a rural residential zone with a site-specific exception. This site-specific exception proposes to permit for an accessory building to be located closer to the front lot line at a front yard setback of 11 meters and to permit for a maximum height of 5.5 meters for an accessory building. And this is in an anticipation of an accessory building they intend to build um, after the minor boundary adjustment has been completed. So the township's public works department, building department, and septic <laughs> inspector have no objections regarding the rezoning application as proposed. The Niagara region stated that as there's no actively farmed agricultural land to be taken out of production as a result for the, from this uh, rezoning or minor boundary adjustment, they have no objection to the proposed rezoning application. Uh, and the MPCA commented on the original minor boundary adjustment application and had no objection to the application as proposed. Uh, no comments have been received from the public to date. Uh, so staff have completed a preliminary review of this application against the applicable provincial, regional, and local policies. A future staff report will provide a recommendation to Planning, Building, Environmental Committee for this application following input received through tonight's public meeting process. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here or their agent? Would you like to speak about this or do you feel that that's been represented well enough? Okay, so for me. Okay, so <laughs> okay, so so the clerk is a, because you didn't want to speak and I didn't invite you to give your name. Would you please give your name? Okay, so thank you. We would have done that automatically if you'd come to the front, but I didn't think about it when you're way back there. But that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to look to the public. Are there any oral or written submissions from anyone present regarding the proposed official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment? I'd like to stress that this may be the only public meeting held with respect to this application. Therefore, if any members of the public would like to make comments and or provide written comments, they should state them or present them now, as the LPAP may not consider comments made during any other council and or committee meetings. 
Also, anyone wishing to speak is required to come forward to the front table and speak into the microphone, providing your name and address for the record prior to speaking. So are there any members of the public who wish to speak about this application? Okay. Do any members of committee have any oral or written submissions on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? Please note that members of committee must make their comments now as the LPAP may not consider comments made during any other council and or committee meetings. Members of council. Okay, seeing none. Please be advised that a technical report is being considered by committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning committee and or council meeting. Please be advised that once the planning committee and or council has made a decision with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment and if approved by council, a notice of its passing will be circulated within an appeal period. There is an attendance sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors which we would ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's committee meeting that you place a check mark in the column Mark Zeldenroos or Tanaj, I guess, if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. Therefore, people who are interested in observing council and or committee discussions about a particular bylaw should not solely rely on mailed notices and thus miss the opportunity to attend the meetings. It is suggested that you watch the township's website for postings of agendas to review items that will be discussed at a council and or committee meeting. The agendas for meetings are posted on the Township website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you include your email address with your mailing address and your phone number on the attendance sign-in sheet. This public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning amendment is concluded at the hour of 6.41. Moving on to public meeting number two. This is a public meeting to consider revisions to a draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by Dunload Developments Inc. for vacant lands immediately west of South Crimsby Road 5, south of the unopened Spring Creek Road allowance, and north of the CP rail tracks. The Planning Act requires in Section 51, Subsection 20, that before approving or amending a draft plan of subdivision, and in Section 34, Subsection 12, that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public in respect of the proposed amendments to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive comments and answer questions from the public regarding the amendment to the draft plan of subdivision application and zoning bylaw amendment for Dunlow Developments, Inc. We stress that at this point, no decision has been made on the proposed revisions to the plan, draft plan of subdivision or zoning bylaw amendment, and any comments received will be taken into account by Council in their consideration. The Planning Act requires in Section 51, Subsection 53, and Section 34, Subsection 14.1, that Council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of West Lincoln before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of Council for the Township of West Lincoln to the Ontario Municipal Board. Would the Clerk please advise of the method and dates by which notice of the public meeting was given? Proper notice was given by way of individual notice, mail July 7, 2019. Additionally, a yellow sign was posted on the subject property and the notice was posted on the township's website as well as in the lobby of the township administration building. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Will the Director of Planning and Building, Mr. Brian Treble, please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed revisions to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment for Dunlow Development Inc.? Mr. Treble. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is an application that affects uh, lands that are legally described as Lot 7 on a plan known as M98. Uh, you gave uh, a very good geographic description of the property being south of Spring Creek, north of the CPR lands to the west of South Grimsby Road 5. The land is approximately 14 acres in size, being 5.7 hectares roughly. And the proposal ultimately is to develop this 14 acres into 136 residential units, um, some through the plan of subdivision process, which is before us tonight, and then other units of the 136 will be created by plan of condominium uh, in future applications for condominium that will come forward at a later date. So this is kind of the first step 
in, in the development of this particular property uh, in the northwest quadrant, which was brought into the township's urban boundary in June of 2017. This application went to a pre-consultation meeting in May of 2018, and we have had uh, an agency review already of a number of reports that were submitted. And just as an example, Madam Chair, there is a planning justification report uh, dated October of 2018, an archaeological assessment of the lands, as well as an environmental noise study and a functional servicing study that have been completed. And so the proposal as it sits right now is to create 29 blocks of land for future residential purposes, of which 22 uh, lots will be created for single detached dwelling purposes, 24 for semi-detached dwellings, and 90 uh, units for townhouse dwellings will be created, along with a storm pond. There is an indication on the plan that is uh, part of the package here tonight that there is a proposal for a pumping station, but uh, the region and I believe the applicants are making it clear that they have found a way to be able to operate uh, sewer by gravity from the lands to the north, southerly through the lands to the south owned by Mars Homes uh, and connect into the streamside pumping stations. So the concept of a, of a pumping station on this property is not required. They can gravity it to the pumping station in streamside. There is a proposal in this plan, however, to have uh, a separate storm pond uh, on this property with an outlet to the southwest, uh, the details of which will have to be sorted out through this, through this application. So Madam Chair, there's, there's two applications before us. I've talked about the, the creation of the lots and, and the total of 136 uh, residential lots at the end. There's also corresponding zoning that has to go along with this to create the residential lot zoning categories that apply to this area. Um, and, and I should point out, just for the record, the proposal is for uh, some medium density residential provisions and a new single residential provision that would allow for uh, basically 30 foot wide single residential lots. That's new to the town to consider 30 foot lots. The proposal right now, or sorry, the existing provisions right now allow down to a 40-foot frontage. Uh, this proposal asks for a 30-foot frontage. So, Madam Chair, it's early in the process. The agencies have had a chance to do some preliminary review. We're still fairly high level in the sense that we don't have a lot of the details around volume calculations for sewage or, or size of piping and that stuff, but it's, it's uh, the right step to get the overall sort of planning fabric in place then we can proceed with the required site plan pieces to actually get into the details of the proposal. There are a number of agencies that have provided comment as well, Madam Chair. Um, I'll just highlight some of the key ones. Uh, CP Rail has provided comments which are part of Council's package at page 298. They have indicated that the proposed berm that's required for spillage purposes is not high enough, um, but they have looked at the environmental noise assessment prepared by the acoustic, Acoustical Consulting Company and are supportive of the recommendations of that report, uh, are supportive of the concept of the dwellings being at least 30 meters away from the railway, and are of the opinion that ground vibration mitigation is not required, and a 1.83 meter high fence is required along the line between the property and the railway. The region has looked at the archaeological assessment as well as the servicing study and the land use compatibility proposals and identify outside the concept of the pumping station not being something the region is interested on this property to have. Um, they're generally supportive of the proposal that's before us and the Conservation Authority will be actively involved in terms of finding the proper outlet design for the storm pond if and when we get to that stage through site plan process. So, Madam Chair, perhaps that's far enough for now. Okay. There's lots of other detail in the report, but I think that gives you sort of a, a high-level picture of, of where we're at so far. Thank you, Mr. Trevill. So, further to that, is the applicant or their authorized agent here and wishing to speak to that? Would you come forward, please?
Thank you for getting that ready, Ms. Cooper. Hello. Okay. That's better. That's better. <laughs> uh, this John Arians would be the one to present this one, but unfortunately, he's not here this week, so I'll be in his replacement. Uh, hopefully, I get the information accurate. I know there is some uh, changes to the plan that might not have been captured in the report, so I'll try and give an overview for that and any clarification with this application that's So before. I recognize who you are, but would you please oh, state yes. who you are oh, yes. for the record, please? I am Angela Bonamici from IBI Group. Thank you, Angela. So as Brian stated, uh, the 14 acres was one of three parcels that was brought into the urban boundary through the land swap application. Um, there we and the applicant has been a part of the secondary plan process. Um, we've done preliminary plans all through that process to try and uh, make the most efficient, best use of the property. Um, the secondary plan, plan was approved with some flexibility to it because uh, there, there was no lotting created with it. There was some, uh, it's general lines and a general road layout. Uh, through the more detailed design of the property and talking to agencies, uh, issues and constraints came about, which resulted in us having to tweak some of the layout of the design, which I'll speak to more um, throughout my presentation. But basically, we have worked with the adjacent landowners uh, to the east, uh, Peter Budd's land, and to the south with uh, Mars Homes Development. So we'll go here. This is our new concept that we have revised, which proposes um, 23 singles and 20 semis. So the singles, uh, does this work? Yeah. The singles are yellow along uh, Spring Creek Road here and South Grimsby Road 5, and in, as well as over here, and the interior of Street A. The 23 singles are on the south side of Street A, and the uh, brown colored units are townhouse units. There are 89 of those townhouse units, which results in a total of 132 units. Uh, just so for the correction, I know Brian said 136, uh, but it has been revised to 132 units, which resulted in a loss of four units for us. Our key changes to our plan versus the secondary plan was uh, the inclusion of a stormwater management pond. Um, the reason for this is I know the secondary plan had the intended for the stormwater management to go south into the Mars property. Uh, based on how that was done and through, because um, I'm working on the 25 acres as well. I know that the size of the pond that was allotted in that secondary plan uh, could not capture all of the 25 acres. So it already had to be increased to accommodate uh, Mars's property. And then to take away this pond would allow for even it to get bigger. So whereas we would gain units in this property, we would be losing units in the 25 acres. Uh, not only that is um, the existing topography of the 14 acres drains towards the southwest. There's an existing culvert that goes through there. So in making, forcing it to go through Mars's property, we would have to really raise that site, uh, the site, 14 acres, to make it go. The only way we can pass the tracks is going underneath them, which I don't know if the town wants to take on that maintenance and cost. And then there's also the cost of the size of the pipe to get, flow all of that. So um, our reasoning for putting the stormwater pond on our property uh, came through looking at those details. And it wasn't just, um, you know, we want our own and everything. It was kind of more uh, uh, once these things became aware, uh, we had to implement a stormwater pond on our own property. Um, our lotting, we did try and 
provide a mix of housing. As you can see here, it's not just a row of singles or towns. We tried to incorporate a good mix along the way. Um, I know that we are, I'll touch on this too, but we want to add a, a kind of new look of lotting to West Lincoln that will be along South uh, Spring Creek Road and along South Grimsby Road 5. Uh, this will deal with not having driveways fronting on those two streets. And then our road pattern, uh, we recently have been able to work with um, the consultant for Peter Budslands to the east. And we have now lined up our street A, which will uh, match. You can vaguely see it over here. That is where their road connection is. And now we do have it matching up. So there is not that um, a skew type intersection. So for um, Spring Creek Road and South Grimsby Road 5, what we want to do is what we call a, a rear loaded lots. In the report, I know they referred to back lotting. We're not proposing back lotting along these two streets. What it is is um, the front of the streets will still face Spring Creek Road and South Grimsby Road 5, and you'll have a front door with a path out to the sidewalk but your driveways are located in the back, kind of like a laneway idea. So people aren't um, backing onto those main roads and it also creates that pedestrian street frontage along those two streets. As you can see, we tried to provide some examples. Um, there's along Livingston Avenue in Grimsby, there's this example, and Burlington, Ontario has it along Appleby Line and Upper Middle Road. Our trail connection, I know that um, it's a little, what we provided here was just the berm, but we do want to have the trail connection. And just for the, I guess, the lack of the design at this point, um, the trail will be, I believe, dedicated to the town. So through the detailed design process, um, and possibly if the town wants to have their input as to what they would like to see, uh, that is just, um, essentially, we kind of gave a bare bones look right now, but it is our intention to have a trail connection and have a full design through that detailed design process. Um, our mix of housing, so during the secondary plan process, we did create a very um, bare bones concept that reflected the secondary plan. And with that concept, uh, we, result, we got the result of 51 singles and 81 towns for a total of 132 units. But there was a lot of uh, pockets of unused space, a lot of awkward lots and everything. Um, so with this concept, what we tried to achieve was less of that and just a more mix of housing to like meet all the needs if you want a single or semi or a townhouse. Uh, with this concept, we do have a total of 132 units. So we basically matched what most likely would you would achieve with the secondary plan concept. We did have a noise study um, completed, which provided the noise mitigation measures, basically specific windows and wall construction, central air conditioning, warning clauses uh, for CP rail, and uh, berm and a noise wall except berm's not written in there for some reason, and obviously a verified letter stating that the windows comply. Um, Brian did mention that we did have the option of a pumping station, and that's what we were trying to move forward with. Again, that was our option at first, but through consultation and uh, working with our adjacent landowners, Mars Homes, um, we have worked through a deal to have the pipe go through their parkland feature and out through their road into the pumping station. So there is that collaborative effort between the two landowners to, um, you know, based off of, off of feedback from the town and the region, not wanting their own separate pumping station because obviously associated costs and maintenance. Uh, so we did work out a solution there in the space of where the pumping station was going to go. We've added two more singles. So that's my brief presentation. Um, I can answer any questions now or later. Okay, thank you, Ms. Monmichi. Thanks. Um, are there any members of the council who have a question directly to this that rather than waiting till later on? 
Uh, thank Chandler. you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it's just more of a comment. I just wanted to say it's uh, you know, it's good to see some. Thank you through you, Ms., uh, Madam Chair, to Ms. Monich. It's good to see a design come forward in this uh, land that's been uh, sitting there for a long time, and I know it's been uh, you know an area to be developed that uh, was coming to West Lincoln. So I think it's a good thing, and it's got a balance of uh, all types of units there. So I just wanted to make it a comment that uh, it's good to see and. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, in the future it uh, does come forward and, uh, you know, we can get some uh, more homes for the residents of our, ta of our, uh, for our township of West Lincoln. That's it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else right now? Reserve for later. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thank Bonamici. You. Okay, I'm going to ask now for the public's input. Are there any oral or written submissions on the proposed draft plan of subdivision and zoning amendment bylaw? from anyone present. So anyone wishing from the public to speak to this, this is your opportunity. I would like to stress that this may be the only public meeting held with respect to these applications. Therefore, if any members of the public have comments, they should state them now, as LPAT may not consider comments made during any other council and or committee meetings. Also, anyone wishing to speak are required to come forward to the front table and speak into the microphone, providing their name and address for the record prior to speaking. So I was under the impression that there may be members of the public here. Would you come forward, sir, please? Sit there, yeah, and use that microphone, please. And just, uh... Yeah, my name is Mike Ellis and my wife, Denise. Um, we're resident, nearby residents of Northridge Drive. You can sit down, Mr. Ellis. Okay. <laughs> and of course, we're, of course, our concern is uh, noise levels and cr increased vibrations and all that kind of thing. So, uh, it's great to see all this development happening. It, I think it's a good thing. However, um, uh, your uh, CP Rail has very stringent guidelines when it comes to uh, uh, height of the berms and setbacks. And of course, our concern is you're starting to do these these uh, guidelines. It's going to be really affect our street. We feel on Northridge. So I think we have to be considered in all this as well. As, as we're going through this process. Um, as, as you know, um, the guidelines for height restrictions, I believe, is 5.5 uh, meters above rail. Is that correct? And which would put another about 18 feet wall above our existing. Basically, our backyard look, looks at the height of the rail. So we're about six feet down from the rail now. So from the top of rail, 5.5 meters would give us about 18 feet of more wall for us to look at and for more vibration to come at our, our homes. Um, also, our setbacks, as you know, are about 75 feet instead of 100 feet. They're supposed to be uh, 30 meters, but we're about three quarters of that when these homes were built. So we're not, we're, we don't fall into that guidelines of the CP rail requirements. So I think we have to take that into consideration. And um, what else was I going to say? I had something else in my mind, too, I forgot. Um, and, and, oh, yeah, and we don't have berms. So, like, we're six feet down. We don't have berms, and we don't have the proper setback. And all, all, so that's great. All, all this is happening, and uh, everyone else is going to be protected, but we feel we're not protected. We're sitting ducks. So... Uh, it's a big problem, and it's been a problem you've all known about for a long time, and we've been voicing our opinions for a long time, and uh, I think we just have to, going to have to work out something to, uh, before this can proceed. Mr. Chair, do you have something to respond, please? Uh, just, um, Madam Chair, through you, a couple, of, a couple of things, I guess. Just for the record, page 316 of the council package is a copy of an email correspondence from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Ellis, which outlines some of the concerns that uh, they've identified. Uh, CP has some mainline requirements, and of course CP, being a federal authority with federal jurisdiction, will dictate to the township basically what is required. We don't have much in the way of ability to override that. However, what we can do through the uh, conditions to plan of subdivision is, a ca is attach a condition that makes sure that any noise assessments um, take into consideration the absence of berms and, and barriers on those properties and ensure that we in no way are making 
uh, their lives worse the by yeah. exactly by the by the development of this site, and I'm sure that that can be designed by the experts, which is not me when it comes to, to noise and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I understand that depending on the way things are oriented, noise can be deflected in certain directions, and clearly that I think will help uh, at least make things sort of stay the way they are. I don't know that we can do much to improve the situation for those existing houses, but we can't make it worse. It, it'll, it could see what you could do to help, but it doesn't take away the safety factor. Uh, you're making it safe for the other surveys, but you're not make, you're not you're not there's nothing really you can do uh, in, in making it safer for us to, to live there. Um, like I say, we have no protection at all. So I think you guys really have to sit down and come up with a solution here because he's just talking about noise and vibration. That's the only part of it. The big part is our safety, and that that's the real issue. Okay, thank well, you. Mr. Ellis, thank you. We have your letter, and so it's attached to this file, which is terrific. And uh, the fact that you've come publicly to speak is also very good. So thank you for doing that. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this application? Okay. Seeing no one else from the public, then I'm going to ask members of committee. Do any members of the committee have any oral or written submissions on the proposed revisions to the draft plan of subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment? Please note that members of council must make their comments now, as LPAT will not consider comments made during another council and or committee meeting. So members of committee, you said yours? Okay, well that's okay. Any further questions or comments about that? All right. So seeing none, please be advised that a technical report is being considered by committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning committee and or council meeting. Please be advised that once the planning committee and or council has made a decision with respect to the draft plan of a subdivision and the zoning bylaw amendment and if approved by council, a notice of its passing will be circulated within appeal period. There is an attendant sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors which we would ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet for this evening's comments meeting that you place a check mark in the column mark Dunlow Development if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. Therefore, people who are interested in observing council and or committee discussions about a particular bylaw should not solely rely on mailed notices and thus miss the opportunity to attend the meetings. It is suggested that you watch the Township's website for postings of agendas to review items that will be discussed at a council and or committee meeting. The agendas for meetings are posted on the Township website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you include your email address with your mailing address and your phone number on the attendance sign-up sheet. This public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is concluded at the hour of 7.07. And moving on to the third public meeting this evening. This public meeting is being held in accordance with the Municipal Act SO 2001 Chapter 25 and the Township of West Lincoln's procedural bylaw and street naming policy being policy POL dash PD dash 01 dash 11. The Township of West Lincoln's procedural bylaw states that any matter pertaining to the naming of a highway and or private road in a plan of subdivision or a plan of condominium for which notice is required to be given, notice shall be published at least once, the date of the publication being at least seven days prior to the council meeting indicated in the notice. Public notice of this meeting was given through advertising in a newspaper with general circulation dated July 18, 2019. The purpose of this evening's meeting, public meeting, is to inform the public of Council's intent and to receive comments regarding the naming of the street for Rosemont Homes plan of condominium being Jayla Lane or, as an alternative, La Rose Lane or Havens Lane. A bylaw will be passed at a later date to officially name the street for Rosemont Homes plan of condominium. Will the Director of Planning and Building, Mr. Brian Treble, please explain Planning Staff Report Number PD-130-19 regarding the naming of the street for Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium being Jayla Lane or as an alternative, La Rose Lane or Havens Lane. Mr. Treble, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a uh, requirement uh, to get a, a name in place um, as part of the condominium approval for this particular development. There is a site plan report on the agenda tonight recommending site plan approval that will actually allow for the developer to commence the construction of units 
uh, just simply not the conveyance of individual units. Um, so the proposal in order to name the street, we have a street naming um, procedure or policy and in that policy it identifies that at least 50% of the names should be taken from an approved list and the approved list in its current form is found on page 323 of the council package. Is there a drawing? Is there a drawing? Yes. Drawing? Okay. Um, so in this particular case there's 63 units at the back of the development that Mars uh, Homes is busy constructing right now. Um, that Mars development is known as uh, Smithville Station and uh, the developer at the back portion uh, owns this separate block known as Block 47 which is proposed to be a development for 63 uh, condominium units, 61 townhouse and two semi detached units on this property with a proposal that the street be either Jayla, La Rose or Havens. Their preference is Jayla but Jayla is not on the approved list so Jayla would be a new name to add but that is the preference they're asking committee to consider first. Failing that either La Rose or Havens um, both come from the approved list and they are satisfied with either one of those names but as I say the preference is Jayla. So there is a requirement under the, the policy, street naming policy, that we hold a public meeting and ultimately at some point a bylaw needs to be passed to actually uh, approve the name in a formal capacity. The actual bylaw will not come forward until such time as we can actually give the street a legal description which is part of the plan of condominium process. At that point it will be a part on a plan and we can give it a proper legal description. But for naming purposes to clear conditions it needs to be named early on in, in the process. So this, Madam Chair, is simply a public meeting to say there's a preference for Jayla Lane as the street name, um, but failing that, La Rose or Havens would be uh, backup alternatives, and uh, we're seeking input if any is available uh, before a recommendation report is brought forward at a future meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Treble. So I'm going to now ask if the applicant or their authorized agent is present and wants to provide further comments regarding the naming of the street for Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium, being Jayla Lane or as an alternative, La Rose Lane or Havens Lane. Okay. Please come forward and state your name. And uh, you know we have a new seat, Jared, since you're last year. And this microphone works, so good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I did have a colorized version of this that might have been more clear but I think uh, Mr. Treble's given a pretty succinct explanation. Uh, my name is Jared Marcus. I'm here from IBI Group. I am the agent for the owner Rosemont Homes. Uh, as Mr. Treble stated, the, the project is uh, ready to go, site plan approved, uh, bylaw before you tonight uh, for the authorization for the agreement and we're looking at uh, starting servicing uh, in the next month or six weeks or so. so uh, we're happy to get this one going too. It's been a long time on on your agendas over the last uh, decade or so so uh, The name uh, my clients chosen name or preferred name rather is uh, Jayla Lane and that's a combination of his children Jade and Kayla uh, So Jayla uh, that would be his preferred option. We recognize it's not on the list, but uh, he felt it was he really wanted to have that uh, to give to his children so that's that's the reason for the name not chosen on the list the other two La Rose and Havens uh, just two names he liked no special significance out of those so uh, that's really the gist of it the street names are for his child street name is for his children so we'd uh, appreciate it if that one was uh, approved okay thank you mr. Marcus thank you are there any oral or written submissions from any members of the public regarding the naming of the street for the Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium being Jayla Lane or as an alternative, the Rose Lane or Havens Lane? Any members of the public? Okay. Are there any oral or written submissions from any members of council regarding the naming of the street for the Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium being Jayla Lane or as an alternative, the Rose Lane or Havens Lane? Councillor Trombetta. I know this has always been a thank you, Madam Chair. I know this has always been a hot topic when people bring forward a, a new name. Um, the name proposed, I'm not opposed to. I know it's not on the list. Um, you know, it's 
I know the in the past we've had some uh, some de deliberations over a, a naming of a street because it was the uh, client's last name and so on and so forth. How so many other streets in this municipality have, and that obviously showed uh, that uh, gave it some controversy around the table. But you know, this name that was sort of a combined name, you know, um, brought forward. I, I don't have an issue with it. I, I, you know. Not that I'm being biased because it starts to J and my name is Jason, but I'm just saying it's... Uh, of course not. <laughs> I'm just saying, but, uh, you know, uh, if it's the will of counsel, I, like I said, I, it's nothing really, you know, it's nothing really, uh, uh, how do I put it, like in the sense that it's pertained to the actual, you know, developer's last name or the naming of the company or anything like that. It's sort of a com combination of a name. So I, I'm not really opposed to it in, in my sense, but... Uh, uh, so, I, I, again, the first one, uh, if it's uh, the will of counsel, it gets supported, but if not, then, you know, I guess they have to go on to the second one, so. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Mayor Bilsma. So, um, I'm always uh, I'm pretty consistent um, in preferring names that are on the list, um, and there is a bias there. I'm on the Heritage Committee, and we spend a lot of time uh, developing that list, so I'm, I'm always uh, partial to... Uh, choosing names from the list uh, because they have a historical significance. We spend a lot of time uh, researching the names uh, that went on that list um, from uh, uh, the archives, uh, from uh, uh, those who uh, have uh, their names of people who settled the area, but also names of people who um, fought in the wars. And, and uh, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a collection. So. Uh, with no dis with no prejudice on this particular file, I'm always in favor of, uh, of, of picking a heritage name uh, list, um, and so we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Thank you. I think I think the value of your comment, Mayor Bilsma, is the fact that there will be people who will be thinking the list. What is this list? And we certainly didn't just come up with a list. It, it is well researched, and yeah. I think that you pointed that out fairly. So, uh, again, Councillor Rayner. Uh, thank you. Um, I tend to agree with Councillor Bilsma. Um, I'm an agricultural lover, and this is destruction of beautiful agricultural land. So they got, they made their money. They've done well. Uh, I rather just go with our usual and, and give it to the heritage of the community and put a name on it that's on our list. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Any further comments? Okay. Seeing none. Please. Oh. You I may as mind. well, everybody you else is. I think, the, well I think the idea of sticking to a list is absurd. It's a street name. It's not something, it's not something ridiculous or far out there. It's a perfectly normal, everyday name. And for us to be spending our time over this list and a street name, like, it's ridiculous. It's Thank you for your comment. <laughs> Please be advised that a technical report is being considered by the planning committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future planning committee and or council meeting. Everyone is invited to stay in attendance to hear the committee's comments and or a recommendation with respect to the naming of the street for the Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium being Jayla Lane or as an alternative La Rose Lane or Havens Lane, which will take place shortly following the conclusion of this public meeting. Additionally, there is an attendance sign-in sheet which is located on the table near the exit doors, which we would ask all present to sign. Please ensure that when signing the attendance sheet, you place a check mark in the last column if you wish to be advised of any subsequent meetings and or decisions on this matter. So this public meeting with respect to the naming of the street for Rosemont Homes Plan of Condominium being Jayla Lane or as an alternative, La Rose Lane or Havens Lane is concluded at the hour of 717. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Mayor.